In this video I'm going to give an introduction to differential scanning calorimetry and I'm going to take a look at the instrumentation used for DSC. So differential scanning calorimetry is an analytical technique used to study thermal behaviour including things like absorption or evolution of heat for a wide range of different materials. And a sample and an inert reference are heated up under identical conditions and then any difference in the energy required to heat them is recorded. So the basic principle then is that we're monitoring the difference in heat flow to a sample and reference versus temperature. And it can be thought of as being like a quantitative version of a DTA. Uh, it measures very similar events but it can also give values for heat capacity, enthalpy, so it can give the energy associated with the different uh, thermal events and it can also measure heat capacity. So it's, uh, DTA can only tell you the temperatures at which these things are occurring, whereas DSC is giving you uh, the energy associated with it. Instrumentation, um, we can have separate heaters, which is referred to as a power compensated DSC, or we can have a single heat source, which is referred to as heat flux DSC. And there's a photograph there also of a DSC instrument. So in terms of applications then, we can study various thermal processes for a wide range of materials and it allows quantitative analysis um, because we can look at the peak area and that is proportional to the energy associated with the thermal event. Precision uh, can be as good as 1%. Limitations, again we require small sample sizes just as we did with the DTA to minimise any thermal conductivity problems. Uh, so we need good thermal contact between the sample material and the base of the pan that we're using um, in order to get good thermal contact and, and good heat flow between the sample pan and the sample material. And also the thermograms can be quite complicated and that can make them difficult to interpret. That's another limitation. Okay, so in terms of instrumentation then, for the heat flux DSC, it looks quite similar to a DTA. So we have the sample pan and the reference pan in a heating element, and we have temperature sensors. And so, as I've just mentioned, it's similar to a DTA. And if we have well-defined thermal performance, this allows us to calibrate for quantitative analysis. And the heat flow to the sample and reference is measured by looking at the temperature difference between the furnace and the sample pan and the reference pan. So we have TS, the sample temperature, TR, the reference temperature, and TH, the heating block temperature. And the heat flow to the sample is given here as an equation. So Q subscript S uh, is, is the heat flow, and we've got a, a dot over the top of this. Um, just to indicate that it's a per second uh, basis that we're using. And that equals Ks, which is a constant, uh, times Th minus Ts. So it's the temperature difference between the heater and the sample pan. And we can do the same thing for the reference. So we've got the heat flow to the reference equals K subscript R, which is a constant, times by the temperature difference between the heating block and the reference uh, pan. And KS and KR are constants that we determine by calibration. So we need to go through a calibration process to determine what those values are going to be. Um, and then that allows us to record and monitor the heat flow to the sample on the reference. And then it's actually the difference between these that we're interested in. Okay, for power compensated DSC, we have two separate heaters uh, with a sample pan in one and a reference pan in the other and they are both heated to maintain the temperature profile that we've programmed in using a feedback control loop. So we, we decide in the software and the computer that's controlling this what the temperature profile should be and then these heating blocks keep the sample pan and the reference pan on those temperature profiles. The difference in the power required to heat the two blocks is recorded and that's what gives us the result that we can then analyze. 
So if we just look at this for a moment, we monitor the temperature, so the sample temperature gets fed into the sample temperature controller, and then that determines and works out how much electrical power is needed to heat up the sample. And this is very dynamic because we keep monitoring the temperature and we keep varying the electrical power to the sample heater in order to keep it on the right temperature profile. So we, we program in the temperature versus time profile that we want and we might have ramps, we might have isotherms, but the important thing is that this sample temperature controller is keeping things on track. So we have this feedback control loop in order to maintain the temperature on the right profile. We then also have the same setup for the reference pan, again so that we keep the temperature of the reference pan on the right temperature profile by continuously monitoring the reference temperature and then the, the controller making adjustments to the electrical power being supplied in order to maintain it on that profile. We then also record the electrical power being supplied to each of them and it's the difference between these two that we're interested in for the results. Okay, so in terms of heating and cooling, the temperature range, typically we could go down to minus 175 degrees to 1000, or some, some instruments will allow us to go higher. Heating rate anywhere from 0 0.1 to 100 degrees per minute, but we've got to be practical about this and we need to tailor this to the application that we're interested in. So if we go at 0 0.1 degree per minute, the experiment will take a very, very long time. Um, so we want to go a bit quicker, but if we go at 100 degrees per minute, um, it's possible that any thermal events will get smeared out in the results and we won't really be able to see them properly. So typically what we would do is perhaps go 10, 15, 20 degrees per minute in order to go at a reasonable rate to get the experiment done but not so fast that we miss things on the thermogram. Um, but it does depend on the application, it depends on your method development and so uh, you've got this full range of heating rates available to you depending on the application. For the sub-ambient temperatures, we need a cryogenic refrigeration system. Atmosphere, uh, we can have an inert gas flowing through to remove water vapour and to improve thermal contact. And the pressure is just typically, it's just run under atmospheric pressure. Sample dishes, um, material is normally aluminium and the sample dishes are normally hermetically sealed. So we have a base and a, a lid, and then we have a crimping machine that seals those together once the reference or the sample is inside. And then we can also pierce the lid if we want it open to the atmosphere. Okay, so that's been a video introducing differential scanning calorimetry and taking a look at the instrumentation. I hope you found that useful. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe, and thanks very much for watching.